All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome once again to From the Tabletop, the TTRPG broadcast from the League of Extraordinarily OK Gamers. I'm the Wraith, your host and GM, and I am so uh, excited. I need to think of a better word. Uh, you're here and tuning in for another session of the Dawn's Voyage Hold. Uh, the Holds. Today, we get to hang out with uh, Chasix. Hello. And I'm a ginger seventy four. Hello. All right. Uh, so we are back with our in the wilds uh, arc here, and uh, last time we left off on another cliffhanger, um, where you guys be were being attacked by a bunch of uh, lichen cubs and a, an arbor squall at the same time in this little camp. Um, let's. Uh, I'm going to leave you on this uh, nice map of Geltanach that I made just for a second so you can appreciate it and see how cool it is. Um, and, then, and then, and then, this was it, right. Let's try to remember which one it was. Um, here's our fun little <laughs> map. Uh, oh, so any, as you can see, um, so in this map, so you came off of uh, New Water Nest, which is over here, right? Um, the camp was, you know, in this area somewhere, and you're working your way over towards these mountains here. Just so you... Oh, whoops, I didn't pull you guys over there. Well, the stream's oh, on. I'm here. No, I, I went back to the Geltanach map and uh, oh. showed you on there, but it's fine. Um, well, now I'm offended. Yeah, well, you, you can go watch the stream later. It's basically the same thing. Um, okay, so these guys... Uh, these guys are, are out of here. Uh, for now, at least, probably. I don't know. Who knows? Um, and so, uh, yeah. So the, the moment we left you off, the, you're in this camp um, where you were investigating things uh, and stepped on some uh, weird, crunchy rocks and Brack heard this giant chorus of uh, things all in unison saying the children, the children. Uh, Kinranth comes running in from the forests uh, yelling that there's an arbor squall. Uh, the trees start exploding with wind and uh, a bunch of weird uh, tentacle dogs uh, that are covered in lichen or made out of lichen. Who knows? I guess it's hard to tell. Um, come uh, all down this cliff that this camp is nestled up against. Uh, they're all uh, sort of turning colors from the, the camouflage they were uh, previously colored against with the, the rock to sort of blend in. Um, Kinrenth comes in uh, to the edge of the camp as the, the trees are uh, wind exploding and uh, looks up and sees the, the lichen cubs uh, as uh, a handful of them uh, at the front, uh, jump down, uh, or leap off the cliff, I'll say. Um, and as they're leaping, uh, a bunch of them all kind of squish together in, in a, in a big shape and hit the ground. And as it sort of recovers off of the ground, uh, more of them are jumping off of the cliff uh, down and sort of melding into this shape and it creates this big uh, sort of like we'll say large rhinoceros sized uh, creature with two big front arms and there's little uh, their little tentacle faces are are I don't know what the word for that would be but you know they're going blah, blah, blah. Um. <laughs> are you telling me that they just mighty morphed uh not necessarily. They just kind of all squished together uh, and made this big sort of wriggling form and uh, now are beginning to run. Because uh, you, you guys said you came out of the tent when you, when Brack, you heard the, the noise of them all talking, right? And saw them all? Yeah. That's the thing I remember. Okay, so uh, they immediately start rushing towards you, uh, Brack specifically, um, and they'll be on top of you in just a second. Who's doing what? Uh, 
I mean, I'd like to jump out in front of Brack. Shield up. All right. So you would like to uh, defend, it sounds like? I would. Great. Um, let's... Uh, okay, go ahead and uh, make that roll. Uh, the defend roll. I will. Get your character sheet's out here. Uh, I guess we didn't do... As soon as I get to it. Bonds and stuff, but... You know. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I'll pull them up real quick for the... Stream. 13! Beautiful! And Orn. Um, okay. So, you get a three hold. Uh, so long as you stand in defense. When you or the thing you defend is attacked, you may spend uh, one for shoes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So you get three uh, three uh, sort of hold to spend on any of those things. Nice, so I can just kind of chill out. Uh, so, Brack, what are you doing? Um, if he's jumping to defend, I'm going to take a step back and take a shot, I think, at this thing. Okay, great. Go ahead and do that. All right, where is my... Where's my volley? There it is. Hey. All right, that is an 11. You have a clear shot. Deal that damage. Damage is just my D8, right? Do you have your beast strike up, or...? I, I do. I have a separate thing for bonus damage. Oh, okay, damage. great. All right. But it's uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great. So one and a one. Excellent. I do two damage. Fantastic news. Um, so you do two damage total. That's that is here. great. Uh, but it also does. I have this written down somewhere. Oh, it was a one d four plus one two volley. Oh, okay. That was a forward or something from before? Or is that something else? It's a plus 1d4 to damage and a plus 1 to volley. So technically I had a 12, but that didn't matter. So, Or no, wait. No, it's to my next volley, isn't it? Isn't that how that one works? Uh, is this from your, from your beast strike? Yes. Sorry, you've got a lot of like looping things. Um, that sounds right. She's one. So you've chosen two, right? Yes. And one of them is the plus one D four damage. And one. one of them is the one aspect, tag. which, which is the plus one volley, which I think goes on the next yes plus one forward to volley yeah so so the next volley you make will okay get a plus one so cool 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 you keep track of all that because there's no way I'm got going it to. um so you um you take a take a you kind of step back and take the space that orn uh gives you and uh take a couple shots uh and they uh kind of crunch into one of the one of the little things on this arm um, and one of the uh, one of the little lichen cubs kind of like falls off the wayside um, and you hear this uh, brack you hear this um, kind of just sort of uh, kind of un um, unintelligible sort of screaming and and whatever all sort of in this weird very weird like practically perfectly unison chorus from this thing as uh so as the the rest of them have sort of come off the cliff and sort of joined into this big thing it's it's sort of grown in size a little bit um and 
basically comes crashing straight into Orn that you are able to uh, deflect this blow. So what? Um, uh, basically, because because of because you were able to you took this defend action, you were able to sort of step in the way of them getting to Brack. Um, so you can use. Uh, you can use one of your hold here to sort of dictate how the how fictionally what uh happens to you. Uh, but there, so you get what you sort of have the attacks effect. Do you want to roll? I was gonna say, do you want to roll damage first before I decide, or would I have to decide? Uh, I think you should decide first. Hmm, that seems a bit unfair to me. Um, okay, well, yeah, I guess... Because, I, I mean, if, if you if you roll... Yeah, because you're, you're... Okay, damage, that's, that's fair, I'm that's gonna... fair. Alright, I will do... I will do that then. Um, so yeah, so basically, so they're de- they're going to be dealing damage here in, in some respect. Uh, because if, if you hadn't been there, this thing would have just straight up attacked Brack. Uh, right. Yeah, so... Okay, so anyway, uh, so they are going to be dealing a total of three damage here. Okay, so I am going to... Oh gosh, what the heck is my... Okay, my armor is two, so that'll be one damage to me. Is that a thing you can do? Is that a move that you have? From the defend, I, I just have plus two armor. Uh, cause no, so you're. I was trying to remember if so there was a. I mean, I do have like I do I have something for if 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 they don't hit me. Okay, I thought there was a thing where it was that you can take the entire because otherwise you're because you you have uh the things you can do with defend is you can either have uh okay you know what i'm sorry i'm thinking about this incorrectly yes okay so if you would like you can you can spend a hold here but yeah so you're taking the hit um, i'm gonna take the hit and then uh so how i see it in fiction is or yes, they run into they they are running at Brack. Orn jumps in front, absorbs the blow, and kind of pushes them back. Okay. Uh, maybe making them off balance and dealing uh damage to the attacker equal to my level, which is five. Okay, so that's the hold you're spending. Correct. Uh, and how much armor do you have? You have two armor? I have two armor, so I'm going to take one damage. So you're taking one damage. Um, great. Um, okay, I, and then you're dealing... You're dealing how much... <laughs> yeah, I can fix that. Like, right now you're saying, or later? Later. Okay, good, one. yeah. <laughs> you can fix one damage. Um, Alright, how much yeah. damage did you say you were dealing to them? Five. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to mark um, terrifying on my blood fire. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, so I think you, so they, they sort of are in this charging motion towards Brack and, and you get right up in there. And I think, uh, did, did you what did you say you your version your vision of the, what was happening here was exactly say, wait say that one more time so they're they're sort of charging uh towards brack and and what did you say you your vision of how this was going i would say looking? it like it almost um orn kind of digs in absorbs that blow and kind of like pushes back 
as they hit him, he's gonna throw back all of his weight. Like two like two football players like hitting each other and the guy who initially went in for the hit is the guy that ends up on the ground. Not that that necessarily happens, but just to give it a Yeah, yeah. So so you go you go I mean you're going in there like shield first basically. Right. Um and you you definitely as you sort of just shove your shield like right into their uh you know what you're thinking is their their face basically um you right. hear some some solid crunching as your shield hits um and they uh as they hit you uh they kind of split like a wave um and there's a couple of them now sort of down on the ground uh dead in front of you um but the rest of them have sort of split off now into two separate uh creatures uh of basically the same size um on on either side um one of them uh no i think both of them both of them are still going to go directly uh directly at brack here um but you yeah you successfully gotten in the way of of that hit uh so now they're they're charging back uh at brack sort of from your right and left orn as you're in front um what do you do now um i'm going to get back into a defensive position um on Uh, on Brack. Okay. And that is all I'm gonna do. I still, I still have three. So if I don't do anything, right? You still have the three hold, yeah. Because you didn't. Okay, so I don't need to roll or anything. Oh, sorry. So you have two hold because you spent one to deal damage to the attack. Right, right. So I still have two hold, but I don't really need to roll anything right now since I still have. Yeah, correct. If you're, if you're just kind of okay. sitting in this. Yes. Um, I'm just kind of getting right back. Um, um so to where I was they do so now they have like I said now they've split into two here uh so uh they're gonna they're gonna try and sort of pincer brack here from from both sides uh if they can now that they right. see you as a threat um and I think you can even <clears throat> see uh like as one of them passes uh like whichever if you sort of are, are watching the one to the right of you look there's a couple uh on the side that sort of like uh wiggle their their uh tentacles at you uh that you can you know you've you've marked that frightened and you can tell that there's there's this uh sort of prime you know animalistic at least right. sense of uh of fear but so they're 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 yeah they're all right well then I, in this I, I, move I, and... i'm gonna defend on the left side of of brack okay the people coming from the left the left side all right um and brack what are you doing I'm gonna go for a blot out the sun roll. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me see here. This isn't a volley. No, wait. It is a volley. Okay. Um, I, I will say if you were so, what is uh... spend extra ammo before rolling? So. Let me see. I have. So I'm gonna take. Two more, so I'm going to shoot three arrows. Okay, three, three ammo. Yeah, well, I'm going to spend two ammo. So. Oh right, because you have you have, oh you had three bundles of arrows, which are three ammo each, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so blot out the sun. Okay, so what I'll say here is. I guess I only want to spend two, actually, because I, can, I don't think I can spend more than... I can't hit the same character twice with that attack, I don't think. The oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so, Orn, Orn has you covered on the, the left side here, but if you if you make a straight attack move here, you are going to get hit by the one on the right, Just just so that's clear. All right. Uh, all right. 
Let's go ahead and make that roll. So that lets you attack more than one thing, is that right? Yep. Okay, great. So you're attacking both of them. That's great. Beautiful. Keep that plus one forward going. Um, and then I will do... Ooh, eight damage each. That's big. Wow, yeah. Great. That's a... That's a chunk. <laughs> that's that's a chunk. Um, math, math, math. Um, yeah, so you just like just willy nilly are are just throwing arrows at the two of these um, as as they're they're sort of trying to charge around here, um, and you you get some really great hits. You can see them just just the the little individuals of this just sort of like sloughing off the sides as you're hitting these things um, and, and, and dropping a good, uh, you know, a decent number of them. Uh, so you're, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, especially in the, the heat of the moment, but you've, you've, you've more or less gotten uh, like a quarter of these things down um, at this point. Um, in what you can guess is the, the total number. Um, I don't know if that's something I should be saying specifically, but, um, so, uh, let's, let's deal with Orn first here. Um, so you're going to take, um, uh, their damage again. So they're going to be dealing a total of five damage. The one from the left side here. How would you like to deal with that? Horn. Hello? Or Orn J? Dang it, I hate it when I'm muted and I'm talking <laughs> and it's just the word. Okay, now I time. said if I half that, does that mean I'm gonna take three damage? Um or two. Does it say anything about running up or running down? It 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 doesn't. What does what does D and D um, usually do? You just... Does half half the attacks effect or damage have? Right. Um, I'm trying to think of what D and D is. D and D usually rounded up, or I think ties usually. It's usually, it usually ties usually go to the player. They go to D &D. the player. Okay, so they favor the player. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'll give you I'll give you the uh, the, the the favor here. So it'll take okay. Two so damage. I'm gonna take. Two damage. I'm going to negate that, and then I'm going to use um, tough as old boots, which is when your armor completely negates damage from an attack. Mark XP. Beautiful. So mark that XP. And now I have plus one. And hold. so this this group just sort of gets on you and tries to to sort of swarm like through you as much as they can. It it sort of like splits up. Um, you know, tries to do this sort of water like wave crashing over you again um but as they get up on there you they know they're sort of like trying to grab with their tentacles and uh and get at you but uh you you get your shield up with enough of them and are sort of like flinging your shield back and forth to throw a bunch of them in different directions uh and scattering them uh and they're you know continually to try and get at you but they can't they can't get through your armor um <clears throat> And uh, and then meanwhile on the right side, Brack, you 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 have shot out all these arrows, um, and you you know you shoot some over at the one on the left side just before it hits Orn, and then you turn and shoot a bunch of arrows at the one on the right, um, and just as you get your last arrow off, this thing just sort of like comes crashing onto you, um, and completely envelops you, um, and so you are now in this kind of a blob of these things on the ground uh you can uh feel them sort of like writhing around you a little bit um and trying to sort of i guess nibble at you um but you so you take uh three damage uh i don't remember what your armor is it's one 
one. Okay, so that's two damage. Two damage. Um, and you are uh, uh, quickly losing air. Uh, they are they are trying to suffocate you. Um, uh, what do you do? I think Brack yells out, "Get off me!" <laughs> or you try to. <laughs> Um, um, but if I am completely enveloped, uh, oh, pull out my sword would be pretty difficult if I'm in animals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, just about anything you're going to try to do right now is going to be difficult. I mean, we can make rolls to try and, and resolve that, but. Uh, mm -hmm. So what? What's I guess? What's your what's your intent here? I mean, my intent would be to just like try to kind of slash my way out. Okay. But... So you want to try and get to your sword, um, or do you what? What do you have? A any knives or anything? A just a short no. Sword? I just have a short sword. Okay. Um, Actually, do I? I do have it. Okay. Oh right, that's good. We didn't <laughs> accidentally leave that behind. Um. Great. So in in the middle of this mass of things sort of writhing around you and trying to um, uh, suffocate you, uh, this, I think, give me a... Uh, I'm maybe willing to hear other arguments, but I think this is a defy danger strength that you're trying to wrestle yourself out of this mass of lichenous creatures. Makes sense to me. Um, let's see. Here we go. Oh, I'm rolling hot. Got the hot hand. Yeah. That's 12. Um, all right. Be beautiful. You do what you set out to do. The threat doesn't come to bear. Um, all right. So if you're trying to get you your sword, uh, give me that hack and slash then. All right. Let go. Hack and slash. This isn't my, uh. Not bad. Okay, great. Um, and let's do that. Uh, did you subtract your health? The yes, two... I did. Oh, really? Uh, I oh no, I didn't. It should show. Yeah, it should show up on the tokens. I have those linked to your thing. There you go. There we go. Um. Okay. <laughs> oh shoot! There I am. There's my tokens. Uh, so you're going to take one damage, um, which is negated by your armor. Um, no, actually, you know what? I'm going to call, I'm going to call this, um, armor piercing as they're trying to suffocate you here. Um, it's one damage, so, um, that doesn't seem too mean. <laughs> Just love to hit me. Yeah. Um, and Just then. I got, got past your demon birds. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> you know. And they will take. Uh, so you try and and slash your way, sort of uh, pull your sword kind of out of your. You have it like a, on a sheath on your hip or something. Mm -hmm. um, try and kind of pull it out as hard as you can, and you sort of like knock it into the side of one as they're sort of wrestling at you, and uh, sort of get a slash it or a stab at some other ones. Um, Orin, what are you doing as all this is going on? Yeah. As you see your friend uh enveloped. So Orn doesn't like that. <laughs> not a fan. Um, not a fan of seeing his friends get hurt. So he is going to uh go into a rage. Oh yeah. Um so the ability is called Ra. Um oh, so I'm gonna I am. that first. After AJ, I I am curious what Kenna's doing as he uh yes I was yeah, gonna he's just cowering I was gonna no I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna roll that into what's going on here uh just okay. so you know uh thank you for reminding me though because I do tend to forget um <laughs> NPCs and it's terrible and I shouldn't um so yeah um so I'm gonna roll that first which is a ten so I'm going to mark three rage. All right. Which is uh, the blood fire. 
So I already had uh, Terrifying, so I'm now going to gain Constitution Armor, increase my damage die to a D10, and gain Strength Piercing. Um, <laughs> Good lord. So ridiculous. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> I am going to... So are these things, like, tiny now on Chris? I, I feel like I'm imagining them, like, smaller. Or they're the, they're, uh, each each individual is the size of, like, a small dog. Okay. Um, so, so, I yeah. would like to to run over to him and just start swinging my big giant shield. Great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't feel like we were going there. Um, actually, I wanted to all right, so I that's a hack and slash. Um, which is yes. Hack and slash strength. I don't think I'm adding anything to this. Can you um can you pop your uh blood fire into the chat just so I can see what all is on that? Beautiful, thank you. There's that, and now I will do Nerf the incoming. <laughs> I miss. <laughs> um. Dark experience. Ooh. Okay. This is um. This is not going to be great. Is what this is. Have <laughs> <laughs> it, Chris. <laughs> Uh, so frenzy is when you fill up all the boxes, right? I haven't done that yet. Right. So you have one more to go. Correct. Um, okay. Um, okay. So that's, that's not, not coming to bear completely yet. Uh, but yeah, in trying to sort of hit this, this massive of things. Um, so as you, so this this group of them sort of uh, sort of blasts around you again, um, and some of them are uh, some of that group are trying to rush over and sort of pile onto this group on top of of Brack. Um, Kinnerenth at this point has sort of come in from from the trees and sort of running in, and he's got his um, uh, his he has a, a spear and, and two short swords that he's um, swinging around, and he's he's trying to sort of come in and take a few off of you uh of the ones that had jumped on you you've you've got a few still sort of like clinging on to you as you just sort of like uh sort of flail your way around and try and and run over and and just start bashing at this group that is uh that is on chris um so go ahead and roll your damage um and that's your uh d10 now correct yes okay I think I need to. Is there somewhere I can press, or do I have to just say roll one d ten? Where be my damage at? Uh, your actual, uh, like the damage. Uh, you should be able to just click on the the damage. Uh, but you want to bump yours up to the d eight or the d ten. Sorry, on your main oh, page main... there. Main page. You've got armor hit points. Damage at the top in the middle. Armor hit. Ah, oh, sick. Okay, D10. Pump that up, D10, and <laughs> one. Um. All right, you're you're very lucky. Uh, yeah. So Chris, you're gonna take one damage piercing because uh, he's got the piercing on right now. Uh, strength piercing. I do. Uh. So and then. What's your armor up to now at this point? Uh, so Orn? my my constitution is three, so I'm assuming it's at three. So then? you're at. Well, it says gain. So you should be at five now, right? Because you've got two base oh, armor. Oh, so gain. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I'm at five. Um, so you're at five. Um, so yeah, they're they're going to be trying to the couple that are still sort of clinging to you are also trying to sort of gnaw on you a little bit. Uh they don't get through your armor. Uh so I guess that gives you another experience. Um, sure does. from your man that thing is so it's, overpowered. Been, this this I've combination is this this is what happens when we when we hack so many things together. Um it's just like you you and and stuff <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Um 
so uh and then you you start taking swings at this um uh but i think you're uh and you do start getting uh hits onto like you know orn orn feel or sorry brack feels the uh the the strength of your hit because you you sort of go to swing and i think a bunch of them uh in the area of your swing just sort of like flow out of the way <laughs> and you just just are are sort of aiming to to basically crack brack like right in the chest um but you're able to uh with the one damage <laughs> i think you're able to just pull up hard enough that you're that you only get a uh small smack in on him um but that's what's happened there uh so kinerinth is is kind of tussling with uh a small group of them uh off behind you and um you've got some gnawing on top of you orn um so i think let's see how many are there left right now um so at this point, I think a a number of them, uh, break off of, uh, Brack as he's uh kind of slashing these things around. You're able to get your head out enough that you can sort of get another gulp of breath, um, and uh, a bunch of them now sort of break off, um, and uh jump at Orn's face, um, uh, trying to to basically do the same thing now to Orn. Um, uh, so you've got, uh, a, I'd say a larger number now of them or sort of swarming at you, uh, trying to, to, uh, suffocate you They're They're up around your, uh, your head and shoulders and, and upper arms and stuff. And, um, Brack, you've still got a, a handful of them down, um, on you sort of trying to, uh, gnaw away at you as well. What do you do? So my my airway is clear now. I can I can speak. Yes. Um. I think I want to uh to level my sword at the ones that are around me and look at them and just say. You don't all need to die. <laughs> and, um, see, and I want to see what their response is. Yeah, so there, so there's um, th- around you. I think is is uh, there. There's a bunch of them that are still on you, uh, basically. Mm-hmm. I said so. You're you're trying to to uh, to c- c- to m- communicate that to the ones that are you know sort of as in, on you around you or whatever, trying to communicate that as much as possible. Yeah. Um. And. So you <laughs> try and tell them that they don't all need to die. Um, I, I think you 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 get this 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 continued sort of uh, like I was saying before this kind of unintelligible almost um, just like wave of of uh, sort of raging noise um, in this in this chorus. Um, it just it's just this kind of cacophonous um all these these voices kind of leaping on top of each other um and then for for a split second as you say that uh they they all sort of uh sort of swoop in together um uh as as a a, a unified voice um and and sort of s- scream this voice back at you saying you will die as the children die uh and they uh continue to swarm you uh i think brack is a little sad uh at that cuz he feels i don't i don't know there's his uh animancy is a dog and these little dog like squid creatures he kind of didn't want to murder all of them mm-hmm. <laughs> But he just kind of sets his face and goes, so be it. And a hack and slash. <laughs> All right. Back, back to it. Another eight. So let's do damage. Ooh, that's big damage, Woo! though. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
Um, okay, so they're going to deal four damage to you. So three damage? Three damage to you. Um, as, as they continue sort of like gnawing, uh, gnawing on you, you can feel them trying to sort of get in under your, uh, your armor and like in around your, your neck and your legs and stuff. Um, you so said they have those, that little sort of like, uh, puff of tentacles at the front of their head. And like inside that, they've got this weird little, uh, kind of crunchy mouth thing, um, that they're. Uh, giving you a good gnawing for. Um, so Orn, you are you are being uh, swarmed and and suffocated by these things. What are what are you doing? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Orn, would it, would this count as a defend or defy danger? Uh, depends what you're doing. If, if I, I'm just trying to knock them off of me, without. I don't. Uh, I think. I don't think. I know. Orn has felt close to this feeling so many times. What feeling is that? Of 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 the blood fire. Mm hmm. Well, you're. I mean, so you're not. You're not like over the top right now. Uh, right. But you're. I'm, I mean, I'm you're. You're one... in it. <laughs> right, it's 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 one mark away. Yeah, and Orn has a feeling that this is something that is coming if he doesn't calm himself. Mm, okay, so if you, because what is it? Is when you do damage, you mark a thing, right? It's 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 when I, uh, no, it's not when I do damage. It is a little different. Uh, um, when you deal your damage, when you do Marco. anything other than attack. Oh, so, is when it. Oh, is when I it comes attack, down, right? Right, is when it comes down. So he doesn't want to attack. Um. So I see. Okay. he wants to defy danger, um, by just using his shield to push them off of him. Okay, so you're yeah. So give me a defy danger strength. You're just trying to sort of, you're you're not oh, trying I don't know to. If I had it on strength. I had it on constitution. I apologize. I can pull that again if you want. Uh, well, what was constitution is three. What's your strength? Strength is two. Okay, so, it's, so it would it's be a 10. ten. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you're just trying to sort of fling them off and not deal damage to them. Uh. Basically, and you rolled an eleven. Yeah. So, so that's what you're able to do. You are you are able to. Uh, walk that very fine line uh, and uh, get so they're no longer uh, suffocating you here. You've you've thrown a bunch of them off um, and uh, they sort of uh, are, are scattered around you a bit here. Um, and so what they do now, I think, is the the couple that were sort of left over i think there's there's still a couple uh of uh that are are uh on top of you brack um there's uh most of them are cleared off of of you orn um maybe there's a couple you know still hanging on you somewhere um but the the rest of them I think as they've been sort of thrown off and scattered, um, they uh, sort of swirl uh, back around a little bit um, and uh, back towards the the tent, basically. Uh, the tent that you uh, stepped on the rock things in. Um, and they sort of pool back up into this as large a creature as they can, uh, muster at this point. Um, the, the last couple sort of, uh, flow back off of the two of you. Um, and, uh, they, they begin to 
take up a kind of a defensive stance uh, themselves um, and sort of are making motions like as if it was like a, a large uh, creature like kind of barking at you or something. Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, two two big arms that are, are sort of like jumping up and flailing and they are trying to push you uh, to sort of push you back um, into the edge of the uh, the trees here where this these these uh, you know wind explosions are, are going on um, there's you know another couple of the trees up on the the cliff sort of blow up with wind and and sort of knock another one of the the tents over um, and and sort of like blow the the remains of the fire uh you know the the charred uh logs in the fire and stuff go go flying um all the trees behind you at this point are just like exploding with air left and right it's like the ground in the forest is like a uh like like the ocean it's just like uh roiling and churning and and whatever um so they they've kind of backed you into this this spot where um uh, you've got that at your back and them at your front. Uh, what do you do? Um, well, I mean, this is kind of Brack's best case scenario that they, that they've stopped the, the fight so that he can de-escalate kind of. So I think, but you said this this arbor squall is is like right behind us now. Mm-hmm. It's all all in the trees behind you. Yeah, there's there's like the the tree line sort of outside of this camp is is just just going. Um, is there anything large that we could like hold on to nearby? Um, I guess maybe I don't understand Arbor Squall. Is it the trees themselves that are, yeah, that are freaking out, or is this actually like a wind? There's like there's these wind through the trees. Big no, there's the the like the individual trees themselves are just sort of like there's like a shock wave of wind just like exploding out from individual trees, um, but then that compounded with you know a whole mess of trees in a forest. Uh, is is just like blowing things all over the place um, and and tipping other trees in directions, which you know makes their root structures sort of pull in a whole bunch of. That's what's causing the the ground to sort of turn into like waves and um, yeah. And just just to sort of uh, throw some more perspective on here, you've been traveling for most of the day, um, Brack. You're now you know not in in the the best shape ever. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, you guys are tired. Um, you're, you've still got at least another, you know, sort of like day and a quarter ish. Cause this is sort of like afternoon, um, early evening now at this point. Um, I think is what we said, uh, last time when you got into this camp. Um, and you, yeah. So it's, it's almost like a thing where you either need to, uh, if you want to, you know, take the rest here, um, this thing is here in this camp. Um, or uh, you're, you know, being forced out into the, into the elements here. Mm -hmm. Already weakened a little bit. Well, that's not happening. So we have to choose like what we're going to attack. I mean, that's that's kind of to to put it in plain terms, that's that's sort of the 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 thing sort of in front of you right now. Um, so in basic terms. O O, -O C. Mm -hmm. I say we I I say we we keep going after that them big big old that big dog. Yeah. We can take him. I think so too. Um um Born. Since they're not on us, can I make a called shot? Can I take the time to do that? Uh, sure. What does that do? Uh, if I make it, I get to 
do some fun stuff. Okay. Um, I think, full disclosure, some of that stuff is going to be kind of funky just because of the nature of this creature, creatures. Right. Um, but, but that's, yeah, but that's a certain thing. Um, I would say, um, I mean, what does, what does, what does that look like exactly? Like you're, uh, you know, if you had, if you, you know, I'm imagining your bow getting sort of partially knocked out of your hands as you're sort of trying to swing your sword around. So you're getting your bow back up, you're knocking an arrow and, and sort of like taking a beat at this thing. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think the timing, the reason he's taking the time is because he's trying to make that decision. Like, do I keep, do I keep fighting these, these animals who I feel like are just protecting their home? Yeah. Or, or do we take the, like, risk it out in the thing and then just doing the math of, like, I don't think that's a, that's a, that's a call I can make right now Mm -hmm. with how beat up I am. Uh. And yeah, so if it, I have a plan if it works, uh, but I'll just see if it does first. Okay. Um, I think the, the thing I will say with that is, uh, cause that requires you taking time and lining up a shot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the thing I'll say there is if you are, uh, taking that aggressive posture, um, to sort of line yeah. that up, um, I think we want something from Orn uh and you know and or Kinnerinth to uh to kind of pull the the pressure off you I guess cuz otherwise if they if they see you making an aggressive posture they're going to go for you basically okay i have i'm going to make this a little simpler great uh orn orn turns to brack and to Kinnerinth and he says Do as much damage as you can right now, and then hide. I need you to trust me. And then Orn turns around and runs straight at them. Straight at, yeah, straight at them. Uh, shield out, trying to uh, go straight into battle. Just trying to ram them. Okay. Shield first. Um, great. So, Brack, go ahead and make your roll. All right. Make sure I add. I love the look of this, by the way. Ooh, that's the one. <laughs> you guys are just, just killing it with those rolls here. Um, um, all right. So, do the damage and pick two. All right. So, what I want to do is I'll deal the extra damage, uh, for one of them. Uh-huh. Um, but for the other one, I want to make them drop what they're holding, which is each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so I don't know if this means that by some stroke of luck, Brack hits like one of them that is kind of like making this, like directing this whole thing, or he just hits like a connective a connective doggo mhm and that causes some you know chunk of this thing to fall apart yeah let's um let's um here's what I'll do let me put that in my pocket and we'll see what happens with orn here um and we'll we'll make that uh uh at my pocket make that happen here um so right. as you're doing so that let me, let me let me shoot my damage oh here. yeah shoot that shoot that shot so there's two, there's my beast strike, and there's my extra 1d4. All right, so it's a total so of four, what? Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, Orn, go ahead and roll for me a... Um, let's see. Slash. Roll um roll a uh this will be a do their thing for uh for Kinnerinth, since you explicitly stated hey dude do some damage. Um so this will what, be what, a two d six plus two. That's what I'm rolling? Yes. 
for for all right. Let's see if I can remember for Kinrith. <laughs> Slash. Third time's a no. charm. <laughs> Wait, no. Wait, I just read it. Hang on. <laughs> no, I forget. Someone Slash can... R space. Believe in you, AJ. Two D six. Oh, four. but I don't have Kinrith on my thing, so I can't. Wait, so I, the, the plus R. two. The plus two is his quality. That's that's okay. What the... Slash R space. Two, two D six plus two. Two. Great. That's an eight. Um, okay. Um all right, do I have oh. I I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up. Woo! Okay. Under these is facing cloud nine right now. Are they gonna win? I gotta turn it off. <laughs> All right, is, I'm back in the moment. Why is my marker dying? Marker. Um. Okay. Nope. Nope. There we go. So that says on a seven and nine they do it, but there's an unforeseen cost consequence or limitation. All right, let me put that in my pocket as well. Um, <laughs> my pockets are getting full. Um, so I mean, you filled the you bad filled, things. Now you're moving into your back pockets. If you got some cargo <laughs> shorts on. Oh yeah, you know I got those cargo shorts. On this <laughs> what if you, Dan? What if you just took yeah. both things out of your pocket and put them together, <laughs> and then they just went away? <laughs> I I don't know. That's how things work. Um. All right. So so you're running in there. Are there any special roles that you're doing here for moves, or are you just doing a hack and slash? Or no? um, I don't think. This wouldn't be like a brand new battle. This is the same battle Correct. that we had. Yeah, um, so I don't think you I can do the the raw. Right. I, so I, can't, I yeah, correct. So this is just a hack and slash for me. So you've so you've now lost the strength piercing, right? And uh, now I have it back after this. Well, I'll after after this. Correct. Correct. Um so when you attack an enemy, okay, melee, deal your damage. Uh, and the enemy makes an attack against you. Great. Right. Okay, so I rolled an eight, and now I'm going to roll damage. Damn it! It's <laughs> another one. So okay. I'm just, you know, we're getting somewhere. Um. Okay. All right. So what happens? Um. Is there's at this point, this this creature that has reformed is is uh, sort of like ha roughly half the size of of what that first uh, creature uh, was, um, and Brack. Well, so so you or you turn to your friends here and you say, "Do your damage," um, and then Scoot, I'm I'm going in. Um, so, uh. Uh, Kinnerenth, uh sort of takes his his spear and just with with two of his arms just hucks the thing um, and just like drives it straight into the to the side of his thing and then pulls out his bow, uh, drops his you know his swords and pulls out his bows and and shoots some shots off, um, and. What happens when you you run in? What's what is what is your what is your brain doing right now, Orin? As you are as you are um, fully like committing to this right now. In in his mind, the only thing that's kept him from from this this blood fire is being afraid of hurting the people close to him mm -hmm. and he he knows that brack has seen him 
in this state before Forgotten how. and would and would think like oh yeah like i want nothing to i want no part of this <laughs> and he could probably take care of himself since he killed like four people and ripped somebody in half um so he's going in kind of clearing his mind ready to get hit and then hit like he it's it's just it there's thought and then it's like you almost zoom into his brain and just like a spark yeah um so you you run in there and i think you know if we were sort of doing TV show movie version of this, there's this really awesome shot of the two of you sort of coming in, uh, you and this creature sort of coming in from both sides of the, or from either side of the the frame. Um, You've got your shield up. You're starting to get screamy. Um, This thing is, is like flailing. It's like little uh, puffs of angry tentacles or like, uh, you know, like it's hackles or sort of, uh, flailing all over the place, um, it raises one huge arm up to sort of take this this giant swipe at you. Um, and Brack, your arrow goes zipping straight through the bottom uh, of that arm, and you see the in you know slow motion like the <laughs> the the creature at the base of that arm just gets skewered and and sort of flies out to the side, and then the whole arm just kind of like disconnects and sort of like falls into this uh this group of of you know like five or six of these things um that go flailing on the ground orn and the rest of it just sort of like crashes straight into you um it tries to to get at you and deal damage um but it it can't um uh because of your armor so you get another xp there um you you get um a uh not quite you know a not the greatest hit on it um as it it just manages to sort of like uh twist and and sort of like separate and move in a way that it softens the blow on itself um i think actually what happens is is this kind of thing where you you sort of like are trying to bash this shield straight into it, but it's it's like seen this you know this thing that you've done before a couple times. Uh, so I think what happens is the the your shield sort of like tries to go straight into the you know sort of the chest meat of it or whatever, um, and it uh, sort of parts a little bit um, like a big sort of mouth opening up, um, and it. Uh, uh latches onto your shield as your shield is trying to go in um and it uh basically kind of rips the shield uh straight off of your arm um and and is is ready to sort of uh go at you again um what's what's going on now Born. So where? So my shield is inside of it now. Inside of it, yeah. Are you? Um. What are the tags? A oh, close, near, forceful, messy. Um. Okay. So you don't get any piercing or bonus damage or anything from your shield. Right. I mean, I do have piercing damage now. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm speaking specifically from your shield. I'm just seeing what 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 happens when you don't have the shield. Yeah, Orn is going to run sh- or like try to like jump in like into the pile of it to get to his shield. Okay. Um, like just like swinging. Or, like, I don't know if it would make more sense to just, like, jump in head first, like, and and knocking some out, 
like like knocking them out as he goes in. Mm-hmm. I don't know how cuz he still wants to do damage. Yeah, I think that's that's the important distinction hit. here. Uh we can, I mean we can sort of fictionalize this how we want to, but it, your your intention here is to still deal damage um and that will this will mark off your last thing, right? Correct. Okay. Um so uh Brack, what um we'll we'll get to that in a second. So Brack, what is what is your uh I think this is a funny um sort of dichotomy here, right? Because you said um <laughs> with the bird dragon, you were like go hide, I'm gonna go take care of this. Right. <laughs> and then Orn didn't listen. So what are you now doing in the opposite position? <laughs> As you um, as you see as you see Orn just like dive head first into the body of this thing. Difference is difference is Orn never saw Brack. Also true. Uh, I, I, there's run plenty away of, from a giant bird before. Plenty of differences in the uh, in the situation, but I just think that's a funny thing to make note of. Brack knocks another arrow and shoots it. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I need help. A little bit with the scene, so we're we're kind of up against the the trees, you're, right? Your backs are to the tree line here, yes. Um, it's you're looking sort of towards the towards the inside of the of the camp against the cliff here. Uh, but there are like there are tents everywhere, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah, not a ton. I think I think um, I'm pretty sure I had said that by the number of tents and stuff, you could you could guess that this was a camp for like fifteen twenty people. Um, so it's not like a huge thing. Um, right. So, you know, there's there's a handful of, of tents um, of varying sizes and whatnot. So I think what Brack would do is run into the camp a little ways and get behind a tent. Okay. Uh, and look back. And then if, like, try to get a clear line of sight to be able to, to continue helping from there. Yeah. Are you... But, Far enough away that if if uh, if he goes nuclear, he can uh, <laughs> he can just kind of back away slowly. Um, yeah, I'm trying to decide. I don't um I don't necessarily think we need to roll. I was gonna maybe like have you roll a a you know like a a dex something or other for a for a sort of quote unquote stealth roll or something, but I don't. With with Orn engaged with this thing, I don't know if that's entirely necessary. So, um, let's um, let's maybe see what let's yeah let's see what happens with Orn here first, um, and then right. we'll we'll kind of see how you goes. Um, I think you you also get the image of of uh of Kinnereth <laughs> sort of doing a thing where he's about to knock another arrow, um, and then sort of like box as he sees Orn um kind of diving in, um. And I think he he sees you go off, you know, to the right side river. And I think he does a similar thing where he goes off to the to the left to sort of get a a, a flank in it, it um, and uh, tries to um, to get in a, a good position there as well. Um, so Orn, uh, let's go ahead and roll this uh, hack and slash. Seven. Um, okay. Uh, so you are on the inside. Uh, so you should be. Uh, so you I, mark I it after this roll, right? Yeah, because you yeah, do your so damage. Yeah, so roll the seven, roll the damage, and now that is happening. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Um. So as you go diving into the center of this thing. Um, you, you just feel, uh, the immense, like, crush of the full weight of these, um, because up to this point, you know, both of you had, or either of you had been, you know, sort of attacked by a smaller group of, of each of them, or smaller group, um, so this is, this is just the full weight, and as soon as they, you know, kind of sense you 
you know, jumping in. I think, I think they do one of those, you know, as if you were like, um, you know, how when you, you sort of like brace yourself for a punch or something like that, you just like sort of ugh, tense all your muscles. Um, that's kind of what they're doing to you right now. Um, so you are going to take a total of nine damage. Oh. Uh, I mean, you get a bunch of that knocked off from. Uh, okay. Well, so is, I, he still, no, is he still I, holding one from his de defense? Uh, no. no, you no, are no longer standing in defense. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So I, I think again, I'm I'm gonna call this uh, armor piercing um, because it's 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 blunt. You know, it's blunt force damage. That's you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh yeah, so so nine damage um piercing the armor and that's, that's okay. Wouldn't blunt force damage be the opposite of armor piercing? Well no, because that's I mean that wasn't <laughs> like armor piercing would be going through through right. the armor. Blunt force would be hitting the armor and then being softened by it. Well but no, it's like wasn't that the whole point of like Warhammers and stuff, once people got, like, fully armored, is that you could still smack someone in the head, even if they had a helmet on, and you're still going to mess them up. Yeah, but not as much as you would if they didn't have a helmet on. They might still have a head after you hit them with a Warhammer, if they had a helmet on. <laughs> they'd just be... <laughs> okay, just be all right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll compromise, and we'll call... How many armor do you get? We'll call this... Uh, we'll call this uh, two piercing. So you can negate. You have five total, right? So you can negate three of the of the nine. Okay. So take take six damage. Um, Which leaves me with twenty three, <laughs> if I math correctly. Um, and yeah, I didn't just use my fingers. And you deal damage back to them. Nice. That's a D twelve now. Um, so you've got your d12 damage, and you are frenzying. Um. So I'm still in control, but you can also uh, make So moves. when you frenzy, you're still in control mostly, but the GM can make moves th uh, through you as though you were a danger. Um, GM moves for frenzy berserker and smash something important, burst out of something into uncoordinated, undirected violence, demonstrate a terrifying strength, make a show of dominance, attack without thought for safety or defense, leave the weak behind, engage in one destruction or slaughter. Um, great. So, uh, so you're in there, um, and you, your part, your intent in here was to try and get a handle on your shield as well, right? Uh, correct. It was, it was that, and also, uh, I was already kind of looking ahead into the frenzy of burst out into uncoordinated undirect. <laughs> okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much just like hold it, like the damage that I'm gonna do. I'm inside of this thing, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be with things around me. So that was the other reason why. But yes, um, great. So, um. Okay, so I, I think with the the mixed success you got on the hack and slash, we'll sort of uh sort of use that to flavor here. So you're able to f to get a, a hand like on your shield, like you're able to sort of basically locate where it is, um, but you you don't have quite sort of full agency with it uh yet, um. So so there's there's that, um. Great. So, uh, on the outside, are you guys, uh, anything else you guys are trying? Brack? I mean, I'd take a shot if, if I'm allowed. Uh, yeah, of course you're allowed to do anything you want. <laughs> I can't see you guys right now. I'm inside this thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm just going to do my volley then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Big deal 13. deal that damage. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Three and seven. All right. Uh, 
Um, and I think my dice know I've got a I've got a level up in the bank as soon as we stop playing. So <laughs> oh oh, so do I. <laughs> It's your level plus six, right? Uh, I think it might be seven. Yeah, plus seven. Um. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, you you and and Kinrenth also uh take some some more careful shots. I think I think here you're, uh, you know, fictionally at least. I I think it. It, you're probably sort of taking a little extra time uh, just to sort of line up these shots and be a little careful at it. Um, Cause it's, it's, this thing is, is getting to the point now where, um, you know, or Orn jumping into the middle of this thing is, is, is less like being completely swallowed and enveloped by this and more sort of being in the middle of like, like you can probably see, uh, arms and and legs sort of like flailing out at points, because mm. um, there's there's getting down to a uh, you know a, a few the a small enough number of these uh, as there's just like you know uh, just a crazy number of of dead ones just sort of like scattered all around here. But um, great. Um, so Orn, um, are you going to continue to uh, just go at it here yeah i mean doing? regardless regardless i'm, I'm just kind of stuck in this frenzy until fighting ends yeah great so um, give it give so, it to me yeah orn is going to um would you say there is one of these unfortunate people like am i able to move or do I need to make like a strength roll to be able to just to be able to move inside of these things? No, I think I think at this point there are few enough that that you could, uh, you could, uh, probably even I think get on your feet, um, okay, and, and you know what I mean. Now, and, would you say there's there there there's like one of these, um, one of these things that has my shield? Like that's keeping me from getting to it. Yeah, I think we fully. said, like we said from the last one. I think yeah, there's there's uh uh you have you have like a a hand on it, like you you're sort of uh have a hand around like one of the straps on the inside, um, but that doesn't quite give you the full uh sort of control of it completely. Yeah, Orn wants to take uh, wants to try to uh grab one of them by its ankles and throw it so he can get full control of his shield again. Okay. Um I mean this is is this still a hack and slash? Uh I mean if you're still if you're still doing damage basically. Yeah, I mean unless you want me to make a strength roll to throw it. Um, no, I, I think, cause your, your intent here is still to do, to do damage. So. Okay. I think you're just giving me some good, and I miss. give me some good fictional flavor here. Um, okay. All right. Let me, Hey, let me look at this, uh, these moves here. Um, Okay, so yeah, let me put this back in here just so I see what I have. Yeah, so you're you're full on here. Um, so I think you at this point you are are trying to you know get a hold on that shield and you're trying to to grab at these just sort of like you know throw them and and just uh you know whatever you can to sort of flail these things along as as you're you're just completely in this uh blind rage mode you're uh uh you know we can you know 
the the camera shot can see these like little peaks of of your your face kind of as these things are moving around it and just like bloodshot eyes and um uh and you I think you, um, let's do it this way. So you're, you're just sort of like taking these things and, and throwing them, uh, all over the place. Um, and you, uh, yeah, you're, you're able to, to throw these things. Um, but they're hitting, uh, you know, one of them hits Brack and, and, you know, one of them hits Kinnerenth and, um, you know, one of them goes, you know, flying into, uh, a tent or whatever. Uh, so you're, you're not, you're, you're getting, you're you're yeah so you're, you're you're accomplishing that part of it that you're that you're throwing them um but it's it's obviously not having the the desired effect here so you're not you know you're not like doing damage to these basically um and i think as you're doing that um one of the the uh the trees up sort of hanging um on the side of these cliffs up here um just erupts with this huge uh, burst of wind and um, knocks uh, another one of these trees sort of completely off of its roots. Um, and it comes crashing down um, on top of you. Um, so. Uh, let's, let's do this. Um, roll. Um, roll your damage, which you're now at D12, right? Wait, so I am rolling damage? Yes. Four. This Great. Sucks. Your your damage rolls are just real good right now. Real shit <laughs> Um, I'm. They which, are piercing damages, though. Um. Oh okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Or um, Brack, you're gonna take um. Two of that damage as one uh, flies over and hits you, um, and Kinrenth is going to take a hit as well. Is that with piercing damage? Uh, with yeah, so that's going to uh, ignore your one armor there. Do I not have any like pluses to my rolls? I feel like, like I, I mean, like... your hack and slash is plus two strength. Oh wait, is it? Yeah, that's 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 baked into the roll when you roll it. Got it. Sure is. Um, you just rolled just real. You rolled a two and a one. Just, just <laughs> so bad. Just so bad. Um, and as this tree comes crashing down on you. Um, so you're going to, between, between them, uh, sort of continuing to, to gnaw at you, I think one sort of like latches onto the side of your neck as you're trying to throw these things around and, um, you know, others are around your arms and your legs and, um, and whatever you, um, and then this tree comes falling down on top of you. Uh, so you're going to take a total of, uh, 11 damage. Okay, so six damage, mm -hmm. which would be seven. Since they're not suffocating you anymore, it's not the piercing. Um, so uh, 
Um, where was my brain? What happened to my brain? Yeah, so this tree comes crashing down on top of you, um, and, uh, you know, your Orn is, or Traxics are big people, um, so this, I mean, this is the kind of thing that would seriously mess up uh, a normal person. Um, and, um, yeah, so at this point, um, there's, you know, a, a, a couple of them had been sort of smashed by this, uh, this tree that hit you as you were, um, on, um, and there's, there's basically just like a, a couple of these, um, around at this point. Um, and there's, uh, a handful of them that are, are, you know, now kind of on their own, you know, sort of like two or three trying to desperately trying to sort of make themselves a little bigger, um, that have, that have gone back to this kind of posture where they're trying to, to, uh, be between you and, and that tent. Um, and, uh, there's a, a bunch of other them that are they're just like real mangled and, uh, and whatever. And, and, and a whole bunch of them, uh, uh, just like scattered around, um, and the the couple. I think the couple that are left here uh, sort of turns into this 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 image that is it is more um, pitiful than than anything else because they've been sort of reduced to this. Uh, just a couple left um, from their large large number that they were before. Um, uh, so Brack, what is what is uh, what is going on here for you? I think Brack has realized um, that he probably should not be involved anymore. <laughs> uh, so he's probably just like pulled back around the tent uh, until until things calm down a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Until so Orn is, is not doing doing all the murder. I'll be back in. Um yeah, so what's uh so what's going on for you here, Orn? As you've okay. just been Orn crushed underneath this would, tree. Would like to show some strength <laughs> okay. and intimidate by picking up one of them and yes, it's a classic. <laughs> ripping it in half. <laughs> Um, Orin. classic Orin. So, uh, there's also a, uh, also a tree on top of you. Okay, well then, let me move this tree off that is on top of me real quick. Um, let's let's do this. Um, give me give me a defy danger strength. Defy danger strength eleven. Um, so, so here's, here's what's happened, happening or happens. Um, you, you get smashed under this tree. Um, and you know, these, these couple that are left on top are, you know, sort of latched onto you. Um, you, uh, you know, there's, there's one that's, that's on your neck here as you're, um, you know, half pinned underneath this tree that you just sort of like rip off your neck, even as it's sort of like partially latched into you. Um, but you just, you know, you, you don't even register that you just like sort of ripped off this, the half the skin on the side of your neck. Um, and you, uh, I mean, how would you go about doing this? I, I guess basically the, the thing that I think happens is you, you, uh, kind of crack the middle of this tree, you know, as it had come down and, and landed on the ground, it sort of probably was, was cracked a little bit, but you um, just sort of like burst out from underneath of it. And there's just like uh, a shower of, of wood chips and stuff that go flying into the air. And another one of the um, trees nearby sort of poofs into the, uh, this, huge gust of you know the the wind that sort of blows those chips 
of wood sort of all over the place, this sort of like double uh, kind of blast thing. Uh, you uh, burst up from this, and uh, the one that you ripped off your neck, you yeah, you just like just tear the thing straight in half, and you're um, you're up here, and you're 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 just gunning for something else to 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 rip up and to and to destroy here um and you look around um and there's basically nothing left um i think um you can i can i sorry yeah yeah can sure, I sure. Roll damage can i roll damage for that because there's something i wanted to do sure with that. i apologize that's fine okay six damage and i killed it I'm going to use uh, an ability called Glad of War. When you deal the killing blow to an enemy in battle, heal a number of HP equal to the damage you rolled. Okay. Um, so back up to 23. Yeah, great. That's that's fine. Um, well, that's that's a little fudgy in the fiction because uh, it wasn't a yeah, but yeah, fine, fine. Um, I murdered it. You you so uh, yeah you you rip it in half and you look over and that small group that had been sort of out in front of the tent. You, you realize there's, like, a, a huge sort of, like, stake chunk of wood that's just sort of ripped through them and pinned them to the ground, and they're, uh, you know, dead over there. And and you... This this is the point at which you sort of, like, come to your senses uh, and just see this scene of, of carnage um, all around you. Like I said, there's... Um, there were, like... Uh, like forty or so of these things individually, and they're like the the bodies of these things are just scattered all over this camp right now. Um, uh, and and uh, you know, Brax over there behind a tent. You see, uh, Kinnerenth uh standing with a half an arrow like knocked, um, and just sort of staring over at you, um, giving you this real. Um, kind of indecipherable look. Um, that's that has a lot of a lot of emotions in it. I think. Um, that's yeah. There's enough emotions in it that I think it's hard to read. Um, is what I'll say. But um, that's that's how this ends up. Um, and Ord is standing there heaving. Um, <laughs> Brack, what are what are you doing? I'm staying put. <laughs> I ain't moving. I ain't making noises. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's uh, so that's that's it, basically. Um, what? Uh, how how do we how do we think this plays out from from here? Hmm. I think Orn he he just finds like crawls to the nearest tent and just kind of passes out. Because mm-hmm. I think that took too much on a, out of it. On a bunch of babies, <laughs> just all the babies. <laughs> yeah, there's just no cleanup. It's just he just passed out. Um. Yeah. So I guess I guess the uh the um kind of meta intention here is that you guys are making camp, basically. Yeah. Um so Brack, what is the uh what does the aftermath of this look like to you? Orin has gone over and, and crashed inside of a tent. I think uh Brack is trying to patch himself up, probably. Okay. Um Uh is that just to just to sort of paint the picture here is that is that a thing that you are what is what is your um um what what does the scene look like between between you and and Kinrith here like is this something that you're just kind of in your own excuse me in your own corner um doing your thing here or is there any interaction between the two of you um I think that would be on Kinna to initiate. Brack would probably be just getting down to business, which in his mind is first thing, make sure 
I'm ready if something else happens, which means getting myself back up to strength. Mm. Uh, after that, uh, he would probably take a closer look at those, uh, the rocks that we crushed in that first tent. Mm. Uh, to <laughs> uh, solidify his suspicions that this is like their nest, essentially. Yeah, so I think I think so to abstract this out a little bit. So you are you are uh you kind of start patching yourself up. Um Kina I think immediately goes into the mode where he's uh sort of has a similar instinct to you as as um you know, he's he's making sure he's in good shape. He's getting all of his weapons back. He's um kind of checking on the perimeter and everything, trying to consolidate uh, stuff to uh, safe areas um, away from the arbor squall, um, and uh, I think after you've sort of clean, you know, patched yourself up a little bit as best you can. Um, uh, let me, if you want to, because you have a role to to heal yourself, right? Uh, yeah, to, I got first to aid. Heal. Um, let me just make sure if you want to do. Uh, yeah, because when you make a heal uh, that's a equal 10, to half your, half your max HP uh, is what you can heal uh, when you when you make camp, so. Um, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to just roll roll D8. Yeah, great. To... So you get three Three of those? Or are you just using all those for healing? Yeah. So, six and six, twelve? Yeah, so that puts you back up to full. Um, so, after you've, after you've, you know, done that, uh, you, you go back to where you, you remember that, the, the tent with the, the rocks in there, and I think you find Kinna in there, um, and he's he's sort of very carefully digging in this soft dirt, um, and uh, he sees you come in, um, and uh, and says, "Yeah, I mean, I think you understand uh, what he's going to be telling you here is that these are their eggs." Yeah. Um, and he is he is in there trying to. Uh, kind of pull out the the ones that are broken, um, and and trying to sort of re, uh, you know, resettle the ones that are good. I, there's so there's um, there's a lot of these in here, um, uh, and you know there were there were a handful of them that that were were broken when you stepped on them, but um, Kinnereth is trying to sort of reseat them and and cover them back up and um, and whatever. Um, and uh looks over i think he looks over to you and and just sort of um uh you know i think you you can still see this this sort of more indecipherable look on his face as he's um kind of trying to process this this whole orn thing um and he um yeah i think he just goes to you and says uh you know says something practical about setting up camp. He's like, oh, hey, can you do this? I'll do this kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, Brack would look back at him and say, uh, don't hold it against Orn. He'll hate himself more tomorrow than we can tonight. <laughs> um, and he looks back at you and he says, I know. Sometimes that's what I'm the most afraid of. And then I think he looks like he's about to Bean. sort of say some <laughs> some more, yeah, and then just kind of doesn't. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, yes, yeah, so you guys are making camp here. Um, so uh, subtract uh, rations for the two of you from whoever's got the food. Uh, 
Probably not me. I think Orin is the one that I, has the food. I wasn't. I wasn't allowed to take anything with me. <laughs> for, uh, I do have everything he had. My um, dog is currently biting my feet right now. Yay, dog! Um, Ow, so go ahead and subtract two uses from the. I'm assuming you're letting Brack eat as well. Um, from your rations that you have, Orn. Um, so go ahead and subtract. He's, he's asleep. Two yeah. from that. I mean, yeah. I just do it. <laughs> just take it. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, sorry. So yeah. So when you settle into rest, choose one member of the party to manage provisions. Then, if you eat and drink and have an XP, you may level up. If you're bedding down in dangerous lands, decide on a watch order. Then the GM chooses one person uh, on watch during the night. Two rolls. I just need to take nothing. two rations. How many rations do I need to take away? Um, just just two uses total for the two of you. Okay. Um. So, Brack, why don't you go ahead and make this roll uh, for the watch since Orn has passed out here. Okay. What am I rolling? Um, so this is uh, just straight up 2d6. D6. D6. Uh, six. Eight together. Six. Okay, great. That ain't bad. No, not at all. Um, so, um, yeah, so there's a couple options. So I think what happens is that, Orn, um, you pass out, uh, but then you end up suffering a restless night of sleep. So you, I think you've got, um, I don't know, you think this is a, a, uh, a typical thing for for tracks of warriors that they have like weird, uh, like post blood rage dreams, blood fire dreams. Yeah, I think. Sorry, I thought it was the bell was still biting like an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. I think they get glimpses of the fight in their dreams, which is what makes them so difficult. And it might not have even been from this fight. Mm, it yeah. would probably be more traumatizing experiences. Yeah. Like with his uh, family that he would be seeing. Because those are the ones that stick out to him the most. Sure. And I could even see this being um, the kind of thing where, like, when you're in the thick of it, in the in this blood fire, like, you, you don't you're not really registering. Oh, <laughs> um, attack of the dog, I guess. You're. Do you hear you're... breathing? No, I don't hear breathing. I just hear you. <laughs> um, where you're not really registering the things that are going on, um, and so. <laughs> now I hear the dog. That, that I hear. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but then when you have these have these dreams, it's like some of the stuff uh, that you you did during the fight or whatever. Like you actually see, you know, what happened um, or stuff like that. So, uh, but basically, uh, so th having a restless night would mean that you do not recover uh, the health from from resting. Um, so there's that. Um, Great. So then, uh, I think both of you can level up if you want. Um, and then we are going to uh, continue on with the next day. So we have. So this this um this ended up stopping a little bit early, uh, the day. Like I think you would have gotten further. Uh, basically, if you if you hadn't. Does it make sense? If you hadn't been run into this thing? Yes? Hi? Hello? Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Um, let me... Sorry, I'm just doing a quick background thing here. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so let's um, let's do some rolls for our perilous journey uh, for the next day. Um, so if we just want to keep doing the way we had been doing it before, um, we had Brack scouting and Kinrenth navigating. Does that sound right? That sounds right. Um, so, uh, Brack, go ahead and make that roll plus a whiz for scouting ahead. I do. Beautiful. Wow, that's, um, big. that's a big. That's a. That's like a, a crit, I guess. Two sixes. Um, yeah. And then, Orin, if you can roll for me a, uh, sort of a. a so we did it as a do your thing. So two d six plus two, which Sorry, is um, plus one forward. That's only a thirteen. <sighs> Embarrassing. <laughs> yes. Give me one second. crushed it all right so can i gain experience for that uh no no i don't think so oh no it just says mark xp so i guess so sure you just rolling in the xp today sweet Um, so here's what I think happens. So, uh, quick question. Yeah. Is there a cap on, uh, ability scores? Uh, 18 is max. So plus three. Okay. 18 is max. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, blah, 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 blah. okay. So Brack with your 10 plus on the scout ahead, uh, you choose two from this list. So you get the drop on whatever lies ahead. Uh, discern a beneficial aspect of the terrain. Uh, shortcut, shelter, tactical advantage. Uh, three, you make a discovery. Four, you notice a sign of nearby danger. Ask what it is. So you get to pick two of those. Okay. Uh, Getting the drop. Uh, beneficial aspect of the terrain. Discovery. Or sign of danger. I'm going to do danger and get a drop. Great. Um, so here's how this goes. Uh, since uh, Kinnerenth uh, didn't do well in his navigate. Um, so what happens is as you're traveling through the next day, um, fairly early on in, in sort of like the late morning, um, uh, how, how, um, how do we think this, well, I guess here, two questions, um, or maybe one question. How do we think the, uh, the morning in this camp goes <laughs> after all that? Probably pretty quiet. Um, and do you think that that goes on for the, uh, yes. beginning of the journey as well? So it's just everyone's just I mean, kind I of... do, unless, unless Breck thinks differently. Yeah. Breck's not gonna... <laughs> Not gonna open that can of worms. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I I think that's that's perfectly. I I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you get anything from, uh, from Kinrenth, uh, at this point either. I think he's, uh, he's kind of trying to process things himself. But, um, so in the sort of late morning, so still pretty early on in the day, um, he finds. Um, uh, so Brack is off to the side scouting, um, and Kinrenth and Orin are sort of in the same area, um, and Kinrenth, as you guys, uh, the two of you are, uh, you know, making your way through these, uh, this, this territory, all this sort of dense, um, foliage and whatever, you can see some of the, the, ravages of the uh the arbor squall from the previous night 
um, you know, sort of like chunks of of wood sprayed in places and 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 rocks all in weird places that they shouldn't be because they got thrown around and stuff like that. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, sort of out of the underbrush uh, comes a bridge. His his uh, tilbarash, which is like the sort of the cat like thing with the plates and um, mm-hmm. all that. Um, mm-hmm. But bridge is um, his he man cat. Yes, um, bridge is wounded, um, and Kinranth is immediately uh, distressed by this because um, he, you know, I I think it. Probably at some point he would have made it clear uh, that Kinranth kind of, um, or Bridge sort of like does what she wants to. Um, he he has described her as like sort of somewhat of a diva at points. Um, and uh, so, especially out in the, in the wilds, uh, she's always not around with him. Um, but he... Uh, you know, when when she comes out of the the underbrush here, um, you know, he makes a mark and was like, "I was, uh, I was beginning to wonder where you had, you know, gone off to." And then sees that she's wounded, um, and sort of, you know, like limping on one of her legs, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, to sort of paint this all in broad strokes, uh, basically what Brack you are able to find. Um, in the course of your your scouting, I think this uh this kind of delays you guys a bit. Um, as as Kinrenth is trying to get um bridge patched up. Um, I don't know if that's something that uh that at some point you would you know help with Brack or whatever can uh just to sort of flavor that. But um, you. Uh, through the rest of the day, I think you you you're trying to sort of push to to catch up to to where you're going, but um, you begin to find signs as you're as you're sort of going through this brack um, of uh, what you come to realize is um, gel walkers. Um, you you begin to find some of the same uh arrows and things that you found um the one that was uh what had wounded um Arnid the agent um uh you begin to see some of those around in areas um you see you know signs of of uh you know large lizard centaur creatures uh sort of rushing through uh the forest and things like that um and so through through all of this you um yeah i think you're you're you find that you know sort of like uh signs that they've been hunting things um and you use that to be able to to sort of skirt around some uh some more dangerous creatures uh so that you don't get into tussles with those um and you eventually make it to this uh, this this waterfall, um, uh, and by the time you sort of meet back up, uh, Brack, you are are quite sure from your from your tracking and all this that there are is um, a uh, of a, um, I guess I shouldn't say sizable because that means a different thing for gill walkers because we last time we saw them was a horde um there's like a uh basically like a, a scouting party size group of modest amount. a modest amount of of gill walkers uh that are in this area um yeah i mean you would say probably somewhere in the area of like 20 to 30 or so um and so you be you've been sort of tracking and seeing signs of these guys um uh, but they they are out here and and they seem to be going uh, uh, basically in the same direction that you are. Um, and you're able to to come up to the edge of these mountains. You sort of come out of this clearing. And you see this giant um, waterfall and this small little lake um, down at the base of these mountains here. Um, and you 
you guys hike your way up the mountain. Um, Kinnerenth is is trying to uh, sort of let Bridge kind of take it easy a little bit here. Um, so it takes you um, to sort of late uh, late evening, so kind of after sunset, um, that you guys get up to uh, the top of the waterfall here. Um, and uh, let me go. Uh, I have this in my notes here. Um, so if you remember this note that you have, uh, it says above the falls, through the eastern gorge, fourth entrance past the gnarled Guerus. Um So you get up to the top of this waterfall, and um, at this point, um, I think you you basically have a choice to make. Um, you can uh, make camp here, uh, sort of up near the top of the waterfall, um, or you know, as you can see um, in this kind of uh, pass of the mountains, uh, there is this big um, uh, sort of set of gorges uh, that go through the mountains here um, uh, at the top of these falls. That the the you know the river of this waterfall is is kind of cutting through uh these gorges and whatever um and uh yeah so you can either camp here um or try and press through uh with you know the the i guess the urgency that uh that kina had mentioned before um and try and find what you guys are are looking for knowing that there is a Gel Walker presence in the area. Uh, I think we should press on. Um, Agree. We all, we all slept too much yesterday anyway. <laughs> um, great. So it's now um, sort of past sunset um, and you guys sort of uh, look through, you know, you figure out which one of these gorges is the eastern one, <laughs> uh, and you go through uh, to that. Um, and uh, Brack, with your role, you get the drop on um, this group um, that you see um, uh, as you're sort of wandering through this gorge. Um, you are uh, making your way through, um, trying to be careful, uh, as you know, these gale walkers are in the area, um, and Kinnerenth finds, uh, this, uh, sort of random tree, uh, that has these distinct, uh, three, uh, sort of large branches to it, um, and he sort of stops as you're walking and sort of cocks his head a little bit, um, and, and looks at the tree, points to it, and says, I, th I think that might be the Quaris they're talking about. Uh, the Quaris has three heads, and this tree seems vaguely reminiscent of that. Interesting. Um, so there is, uh, as the note says, yeah, fourth entrance past the Norgueras. So, as you, as you are starting to look um, around through this, this gorge as you go, um, you can see uh, a lot of uh, cave structures um, that branch off into the sides of the gorge. Um, and so you start looking uh, for cave entrances after this tree, and uh, it's not long before you see um, a scene in front of you. There is a camp. Uh, there are some fires burning. Um, and you are able to find uh, this this group of gale walkers that, that Brack had noticed. Um, like I said, there's like 20, 20, 20 or what did I say, 20, 30 of them or so. Um, and the camp is up against the side of one of these gorges. Um, 
but instead of one of these cave structures that you see, uh, there is what looks like um, a large cave-in uh, that there is a, a section of the side of the gorge here that is covered in uh, big uh, chunks of rubble. Um, and another thing you notice is uh, inside of this camp, um, there are a handful of flags flying um, with this uh, symbol on them uh, that is a uh, basically a white circle with a couple um, lines coming out of it that, to reminiscent of a, of a sun, um, but, but a very sort of simple version of that, um, which... Um, I don't think you remember um, seeing any of that um, among the the Gelwalker hordes when you fought them in Third Shuldor. Uh, so that's that's kind of the scene ahead of you. Uh, what are you thinking? Since you have the drop on them. Um, oh. Is this like an established camp or is this a like waste, like kind of like a, does it look like the kind of thing that they would break down in the morning and take off? Or is this a, like they've been set up here and there's well-worn trails leading to and from it and like. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think of yeah the trails like you said. I'm trying to think of what what would be signs that you could tell those sorts of things. Um, I mean, you, you know what you're you're looking for here. So I think by the by the sense of that, it's um, it's not like a like a permanent settlement kind of a camp thing, um, but it's it's a place that they have been uh, for uh, at least a handful of of days here. Um, you know, maybe up to a couple weeks or something. Um, but yeah, but not, not a thing that, yeah, that looks like they'd be breaking down and moving on in the morning or something like you said. Um, I, th I think Brack would ask Kinna, um, Are all the Gelwalkers as 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 wild as the ones that attacked Third Shoulder? Gelwalkers are creatures I would define as wild. I but I I can't say that I've seen this kind of uh, symbology before. They. Gilwalkers have their their tribes and and their their war bands and such, but this this symbol is not one that I've seen, not one that I recognize from among them. What is it you're thinking? I mean, is it possible these Gelwalkers are different from others? It depends what you mean by different. I don't know. Somehow more civilized. <laughs> um, I don't. Uh, I mean, he's not going to know an answer to that. No, but... he's he's yeah. Obviously, he doesn't know an answer to that. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think if there was there was anything that you could gain from uh seeing the camp. Uh. I mean, I could do like yeah. a discern realities. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, that would be a that would be a reasonable thing to do anyway. Just to sort of, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be <laughs> telling you what to do, but, uh, but yeah, that's certainly something that you can that you can do. Um, cool. Hot rolls. The hot rolls continue. Hot rolls continue. 
Um, I would. I mean, I would have given you a the audio version. <laughs> plus, I would have given you a plus one from from Kinrath because I think it makes sense that he would be sort of trying to scout this as well. Um, so what um, what do you envision you uh, doing to to do this here? Um, I mean, I think what honestly what would probably happen is. Rack would tell the two of them, or at least Orn, as the loudest member of the group, <laughs> to like sit tight while he kind of scouts the area. And he would kind of make a circle around, do as much like scouting from as many angles as he can to see just like what he can see and hear and probably smell <laughs> from like inside this camp to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's, that's a thing that I think Kinrenth could, could definitely um, or would definitely be doing with you as well. Um, Orin, I think, uh, I mean, what do you, do you have any uh, vision of what you would be doing here in the meantime? <clears throat> no, I mean, Orn or knows that he is just a giant. Like, <laughs> So he's just he's he's gonna try to watch them as much as he can before they're out of his sight, um, and and just keep an eye, try to like hide away and keep an eye on the area that they are in. Yeah, I think Kinnereth does um, ask you uh, to to watch Bridge for him in the meantime, as right. she's still not you know still recovering a little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the way he asks you to do that, I think is, is pretty still sort of terse and kind of ambiguous, um, okay. that he, he, you kind of get the sense that he, like, he wants to have a conversation with you, um, right. but knows, you know, this isn't the time. Uh, right. and, and so and yeah, so for the time being, asks you if you can look after Bridge um, while they go scout. So you get to hang out with this large plated cat thing. Cool. Um, uh, great. So, Brack, uh, so you get three questions off that list. Oh, hey. There they that, are. There they are. So what here is useful or valuable? Uh, what here is not what it appears? And who's really in control here? Um, okay, great. So um, let's start with um, who's really in control here. Um, I think... So as you get a... Uh, as you're getting looks around this camp, um, you you see uh, individuals with uh, this this sort of white sun iconography um, like painted on them as well. Um, and the more you see, uh, the more you get uh, the sense that these are are some kind of um, uh, sort of almost like zealot fanatic types um and i think at one point you are able to catch um enough uh hearing wise um that you hear mentions of the noon one oh but without the capital and that's a mistake <laughs> after o um uh, I'm trying to think if you've heard that name before. I mean, we've heard the name of other uh, other cartographers, which are all like the blank one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um... <laughs> What? Nothing. Okay, great. Just that was just Bra Brack being <laughs> sighing loudly at having to deal with another cartographer. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah, so these so these guys are are uh basically here um on on the 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 orders of of the noon one. The the noon one is the one that is kind of in charge. Um and what here is useful or valuable? Um I don't know, do you do you have any ideas of what kinds of things would be useful and or valuable? Like what do you know what I mean, I what, think that question is in like what is what is valuable to them, maybe? Uh Okay. In that like what could be used to distract them or as leverage against them. Sure. Like any, okay. Anything like that, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. So what, what, could, what could make a bunch of them go running off into the forest and leave us <laughs> the frick alone? Um, so, so you, the, a lot of them are, uh, there's, there's obviously a, a very heavy focus on this cave-in. Um, and I, maybe this is, you know, sort of more of the purview of your second question and what not, what it's not what it appears to be, but, um, they are, they're not trying to get in to this cave-in. Um, but they are keeping a very close eye on it. Um, and like they, they have, uh, sort of watch people posted, um, on and around it. Um, I think you can even catch some glimpses of, of, of some of them trying to like, um, to listen, um, in and around the, the cave in. Um, and then I think, I think since, since you, I mean, yeah, so you rolled really well. Um, I think you catch a glimpse of, of, uh, a body in, in the camp at one point. Um, you know, or maybe this is something that Kinrenth saw, um, that you, you know, reporting back, um, whatever. Um, but this body that you saw, um, was not, uh, Cortanjul, which is the, the, the race that these Gale Walkers are. Um, the body was, um, in faith. Um which are the, you know, the sort of the tall, uh, yep. dark-skinned metal body, uh, swirly metal pattern things. Um, and uh, you... You get a sense uh, that they have some level of fear. Um, I think this body is is just kind of like sitting out in the like the middle of uh you know a part of the camp um and they they like they don't walk closely to it um and uh they you know they try to avoid it <laughs> uh they don't look at it um so there is there is some level of fear here um with these these gelt walkers concerning this uh this in faith in faith and body. Um, yeah, I think I think that satisfies your questions. All right. Um. So I am. Uh, it's eight thirty now. I, I'm content to uh, call it here if we want, and then you know you guys can have a chance to sort of think about what you like, what you want to do here, your plan of uh, action or whatever. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we do that? So let's that let's sounds good to me. Let's call that. Um, uh, any other sort of last 
qualifying questions or, or clarifications or anything about what's going on here? Uh, I think I'm good. Good stuff. Cool deal. Um, all right, let's do some end of session. Uh, 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 bonds. Anybody got any bonds? They want to uh, resolve, completely explored, no longer relevant or otherwise? Uh, I think I'm good. All mm. right. I feel like... I don't know. My bond with Orn says capable of terrible things, but has a softer side that doesn't seem to act, that doesn't seem to be an act or a mask. His softer side could be a friend. His violent side could and has saved us all. Which side to foster? I feel like coming face to face with that again and literally having it save the day again. Yeah, so how does that how does that change what you what you feel about Orn? I don't know if it has yet, but okay. it, it might start But it's start getting to. it's getting close. Yeah. It's that I mean that conversation with Kenna, I feel like did more to to change really? Brack's feeling about it than how so? Just the like Kenna saying that he's more worried that Orn's going to hate himself more than we could. Ah. Uh, I think Brack would probably move towards more towards the you need to like you need to accept accept the parts of yourself that you don't like. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's really interesting because I, I like the way we've been sort of playing with this. Because uh, I think, Orin, you had talked about before where, like, Fawit is the one that you, you know, your, uh, you know, your quote-unquote dark side feels kinship with. Um, and Brack was the one that your light side feels kinship with. Um, right? Is that is that still... Say that again. My dark side. That your your dark side feels at home with, uh, Fawit, Fawit. and your yeah. light side feels at home with with Brack. Um, or is I, that? I would say my my light side feels more at home with with Kenna more than anybody. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm actually wondering if there's if there's something in your bond with uh with Kinrenth that is that is different now. Um, or, or somehow. Yeah, he saw you lose control, AJ. Did he, that? That's, that was going to be my next question. Was he there the first time it happened? Um, in third shoulder when you guys first like landed. Yeah, because I remember he was. He I was think like, so. I don't know if he was there in that moment though. Or if he had gone somewhere else. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember. That would be, be the one honest. thing that I want to find out. Um, do I even have a way to find that out? I don't know that I do. Because we don't have no. recordings or anything of that. Well, we can, I mean, then we can, we can say that it did or didn't. Yeah, what's, what's um, more interesting? Whatever, whatever story. I would say what's more interesting is that he didn't. And this would be the first time he's seeing it because all he has heard, he, the only thing he has is heard about it, and he's never seen it. And I think in those conversations, he was always very like. Well, there was the, well, uh, there was the time on the when you had the little boat battle with the uh, the barbless lady who was trying to kill you because that was her sister that you ripped in half in the alley. Um. Yeah, but I never, I never went into a frenzy. Okay, you didn't rage on that one. I, I, this is the first time I did. Okay. Okay. Besides that, besides that other one, but that was when we were doing a different different um, systems so is different. Game. Game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm interested in that. In that version of that, then. Um. So does that? How does? How does that? Color your. Your bond with with Kinrith. 
Um, Especially the way that there's been this kind of weird. Uh, yeah, hang, hang on, hang on one, hang on one second. Sure, sure. Um, can we come back to that? Can yeah, we... absolutely. Um, if you if you need a second, let's uh, Brack, let's talk about. Uh, uh, if it's okay, so if you don't want to change your bond there yet, um, let's talk about alignment. All right. Refuse to give up despite rejection or disaster. I think he... Did he kind of do the opposite of that? <laughs> how, do like, you, tried, how do you mean? In trying to stop the fight a couple of different times. Mm, and then not really following through with it. Well, and then... But, like, that, not that. But, like, in that he tried to stop the fight. Oh, like, oh, I see. He was trying to give give up. But not, I guess, in the face of rejection or disaster, just to save... Sure, sure. To save life, so... Yeah, I mean, I th I think that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know that there's... I don't know that there's anything in there that... That would that satisfy counts. that, yeah. I think I agree with that. Um, cool. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know that I would have considered anything that happened rejection and or disaster. Sure, yeah. I mean, Not it quite. was a fight, but it wasn't. It was a fight, but you guys disastrous. had that reasonably well in hand most of the time. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah. Cool. Um. My headphones just died, so you might. Uh oh. Hear me sounding differently. Okay. That's fine. Um, okay. So, uh, did you have any else to say on your Kinrith bond, or do you want to go to your alignment here? Um, so, Kinrith bond. Yeah, I would definitely say it's 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 change. I don't really like feel that BFF vibe with him right now. I feel like all I have done is disappoint him. Yeah. And every, like, he just hasn't been doing anything right in Kenna's eyes. We just haven't been seeing the same way, which we did for such a long time. Yeah, so I, I think that's great. Um, so what then, what then is that causing you to, uh, to, to do? So what are you, what are you intending to do about that? Um, what is your, you know. What does that imply like, for you? I don't I don't really know. I mean, are you is that like a oh, I haven't been doing things right by Kinna. Um I, I you know, we I need to figure out a way to make this right or I need to you know put some distance between us or I need to uh, you know, figure out a different way to, uh, to relate to him, or, you know. Um. I. Oof. Let me think about it. Let me. Okay, let me. Sure. Can we? Can we? We'll put um, a put a pin on that. Yep. Yeah. Write that in for the next one because I don't really know how I want to go about that yet. Great. Yeah, I think so. That would be the thing I think you want to you want to think about is is what because uh, I think that, that's a great uh, instinct in terms of of how you're feeling uh, or what the, what the sort of situation is from your eyes. Um, then just trying to figure out what you want to do then uh, in light of that. Uh, right. What you what you what your intended direction of the relationship is. Um, good. And then your alignment. Uh yeah, endanger yeah. yourself to uh, protect someone weaker, definitely. Hundred percent. Uh dig that. Um da, 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 da. <laughs> did we learn something new and important about the world? Uh we learned there are cultists. Yeah. Among the uh <laughs> Absolutely. That among counts. the Yell Walkers. Hundred percent. Mark that XP. Worked. 
Uh, did we overcome a notable monster or enemy? Notable? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's that's always the funny thing is because these are like what what constitutes as notable. Like, I think that was a notable encounter. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, like a bunch of liking cubs are just like that's just like a a wild animal. Um, yeah. But I mean, it was if you know it took up like three quarters of our session here, so <laughs> I think it's a significant uh like encounter. Um. So I, I'm I'm willing to call that a yes. I think. All right, is Mark saying? Um, mostly, if if for nothing else than just the fact that it was such a sizable sort of chunk of of what we devoted our time to. Mm -hmm. Uh, did we loot a memorable, memorable treasure? Uh, I think that's a no. We got no treasure. <laughs> All right. Cool deal. Hey, that was fun. Um, I think that was great. Um, oh, hey, there's someone in the chat asking if I want to become famous. Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, yes. But not with that really suspicious looking link. <laughs> um, he already is famous. <laughs> um, I can buy followers. He has a know? Grammy. Uh okay okay well <laughs> um has to be real <laughs> I know it's real uh I've touched it I took a picture with it once um anyway um cool all right well that'll do it uh for us this evening thanks for tuning in and we'll see all of you all next time. Thanks so much. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.